All right, guys. Daryl here with Killboy.com. Got Lori in the vehicle with me. We're driving this Vanderhall's trike rental from Wolf Creek Rentals. And we're going to do a little night run here on the Dragon. It's a crispy January Monday night. About uh, 7 ish, I think. Sun sets at like 5. 40 this time of year. We've been running around for a couple of days getting photos and videos of this little toy. Um, but it's been hard to, well, it's not hard, I just don't have a good setup for recording audio. So I'm hoping that this intercom inside my helmet will give you enough of the sound of the car that you'll get an idea of what it sounds like. It's got side pipes, it's a little, re it's a reverse trike if you're um, not familiar with this. This is the Vanderhall uh, Venice made in Provo, Utah powered by a GM 1.4 liter turbo, 200 horsepower, 180 pound-feet of torque, and uh, it's front-wheel drive, interestingly, and I really did not go in with expectations of enjoying driving. The I'm not a fan of front-wheel drive cars, and unless they're just really set up to have a lot of front-end authority, which is pretty uncommon. Some certain front wheel drive, you know, type race cars and really well set up like Civic TGs. One of our photographers has got one that's set up to really work on the front end well and it'll actually drift going into the turns. It's got so much front grip. But for the most part, it's a pretty frustrating experience in my. My experience and that kind of understeer and stuff. But the nice thing about these reverse trikes, they have one tire in the back and two tires in the front, and they have so much front authority that assigning the forward propulsion to the front end doesn't really overwhelm it like it does, like it can on cars. Um, it actually works pretty nice because you can. You can really get on it coming out of turns, and you don't have to worry about looping the thing or, you know, being cautious or whatever. You you can, all you're going to do at most is to spin one of the inside tires, which is really hard to do on this, uh, this little guy. I'm, I'm, it's a rental. I'm not, you know, out here just taking it to the extremes, and I'm on, you know, these tight fairly unforgiving mountain roads where I don't get a lot of space to make recoveries and things anyway, so driving spirited, but it's hard to really find the limits with something that has some pretty high limits, as this thing does. It's got a little bit of body roll. It's, it's compliant, though. I mean, it's one of those things that's always sort of a taking give in regards because the seats are a little bit too wide for my somewhat smaller frame. I'm getting a little bit more chubby in my later years, but I still feel like I'm moving around a little bit, so I have to sort of push and fight it a little bit to stay in place. If it was mine, I would have some pretty aggressively bolstered seats, race-type seats that would hold me in place without having to use my arms and legs as much. One of the nice things about this type of vehicle where you kind of drop into the seat versus slide in like a car because it has no top and actually has sides that don't swing open, you know, so you can't come in from the side, is you can have a seat that has really aggressive bolstering, like almost like these aluminum race seats and things like that that are really fine-tuned for your, you know, your size. And... um would normally be real difficult to drop into on a car, 
But in this thing, because you come in from above, it would work just fine. It's been a really beautiful past couple of days to be January, um, mid-60s yesterday and today. Um, and then we're going back to continuous dropping of the temperatures until the weekend here where we're supposed to be getting snow Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Light uh, accumulations, but still, that's just how the temperature is going. So tonight's the end of the two nice days. This off-camera turn right here. Um, but it's been it's been a fun. It's been we both uh, agreed that we could really see ourselves living with one of these Vander Halls, uh, making a couple of modifications, and then being happy with it, one of the big things is that uh, the nighttime driving experience, the lights are pretty good, the high beam, as you can probably see in the in the video there, really wants to mostly illuminate the road just right in front of the car, and the low beam, I'll pull it back here, the low beam is shaped like a W pattern more or less, so there's a couple of shafts that go off to the side, and then there's a chunk in the middle there, so... Low beam's got a pretty good pattern. I'm noticing like a spot up high right now, though I hadn't noticed before. But the high beam is aimed just a little too low, and I don't know if if these headlights, how adjustable they are. They're kind of behind a, a grill on these cars. Uh, not say car, but trike vehicle. So I don't know how easy they are to adjust. Even just getting into under the hood requires removing eight bolts. You don't just pop a hood. It's got a pretty aggressive little uh, turbo setup. I don't know how much more you could get out of it with tuning, but 200 horsepower from 1.4 liters, pretty strong. Um, I don't know if you pick it up, but when you decel, there's some nice little blow-off turbo noises. Um, so it's got a pretty pretty aggressive diverter blow-off valve system. I think it's just because it has an intake that's fairly open and it's you're hearing it through the air filter. It's using one of those little uh, mushroom-shaped race air filters. Um, but yeah, the, the other big kind of issue that we would have with, especially with driving at night like this, is the glare on the windscreen um, from the instrument panel reflecting up onto it. It's just right in front of your face. And... Um, that's really kind of disappointing. It didn't take much if they put little uh, little lips sticking out above the gauges or a sort of a lip that sticks out off the, the dash piece that the windshield is connected to and just kind of block the light from the gauges from being able to reach the, the windshield above it. The, the, Windscreen windshield on this is actually glass, and it's really nice. Um, it's, it's raked back pretty hard, so if it wasn't glass, it would be a problem with uh, optics uh, being the way they are on, on polycarbonate and stuff, you know. And then, of course, that stuff gets scratched easy and all that. So this is laid back, and you're looking at it, looking through it at a pretty steep angle. But um, but it is really clear. It's good, clear optics, and uh, yeah, if it's not for this glare. We, I put my hand above the gauges and blocked that that light. Man, it's, it's got a really good view otherwise. Like I said, the headlight pattern is not the greatest. And there's some room there for potentially improving or maybe adding some optional LED lights to the high beam circuit so that you can get a little bit more wider and more distant um, you know, light throw, but uh, not too bad. See pretty good. This camera, and, you know, all these action cameras, they don't really see, pick up things quite as well as our human eyes do for the most part, most of us. Um, mine are still pretty good at night, my eyesight, even though I'm getting close to 50, but some people don't see quite as well at night might need more lighting, but this seems pretty pretty decent to me. If I could just cut down some of the glare off the instrument panel and maybe dim the instrument lighting in general, 
a little bit bright, and I don't see any way of dimming it. Um, it's got heated seats, and they're pretty potent heated seats. It's just the bottom pad, not the back, but it's heated, um, so it's just your butt. But it's three-way, low, medium, high, and then off for that, so um, even on low, it's pretty pretty evident that it's on. Medium is pretty aggressive, and high is almost, you know, you have to be in really cold temperatures to be able to sustain that uh, thing setting. Um, if you, it's also got a fan forced heater because it has a radiator system, you know, and all that being a General Motors four-cylinder engine, so it circulates air, uh, water through a heater core, and you can turn on a fan and open up the heater core and blow the air out through these two vents in the middle of the cockpit in front under the dash there. And they're pretty aggressive. The, the air that the fan that blows the air out is pretty strong, but you are just sitting out in the in the wind, obviously, so they only really heat the, you know, like your your hand that's on the inside, uh, my right hand as a driver, left hand as a passenger, but it works pretty okay to kind of trick your body into thinking that your hands aren't that cold. There's that old trick, if you heat up one hand, the other one doesn't feel quite so cold. Steering wheel is uh, the steering wheel and transmission I need to cover. So the steering wheel is a uh, sort of a retro wooden, thin rimmed, slightly larger diameter than it probably needs to be steering wheel. It looks really cool, retro, like this whole vehicle is, but I don't care for that type of feel. Uh, I have some fairly bony hands, so those two things combined end up creating sort of a harsh interface. Um, I would rather have a slightly smaller diameter wheel with a with a fatter, more of a leather style um, rim. But the steering is pretty quick. Um, that was my main gripe with most of the uh, other three wheel vehicles I've driven, which is really only the Polaris Slingshot and the Can Am Spider. The, the Slingshot, the steering was a little too slow. Um, you had to turn the steering wheel really far. Most of the turns on the Dragon only require about a quarter of a turn on the steering wheel on this vehicle. Um, but it's not too twitchy when you're going straight down the highway. And uh, it's not too heavy, not too light. The steering is really good. Um, the transmission isn't automatic, and it's electronically controlled. But it's a, it's a torque converter style, so it's not real quick shifting like the, you know, the cool BMWs and stuff like that. And it has, they've got the optional bump shift on this one over here on the left, so I can push this this lever forwards or backwards, and it's the proper directions. If you pull back, it shifts up. If you push forward, it shifts down. Um, but it's a little bit slow. It does rev match and things like that, so it doesn't upset the vehicle when you're, you know, downshifting, going into a turn or whatever. And we're here at the Dragon store here. I'm going to slide under this gate because we can. And, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that run there. I'm going to be putting up some more info about this guy. So if you have any questions about it or want to leave me any comments about what you thought of the run, I really do appreciate it. And if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, you got any vehicles you want me to test drive for you, I'd be glad to. Any roads you want me to check out around you, then contact me, and um, I'll get in touch with you about that, okay? Thanks, guys. Bye.